I am currently reviewing the Pearl Acoustics Sibelius speakers that you can see there behind me. And they're an interesting speaker because they're a single driver speaker with no crossover. So that means there is no filter in between the speaker's driver and the amplifier. So I'm thinking that surely the Sibelius is a speaker that will allow me to hear an amplifier's character if it has one, of course. And I wanted to make sure that I listened to a number of different amplifiers with the Sibelius speakers as part of their review, a number of different styles, designs, and topologies. And two of the amplifiers that I've been listening to are at their heart Class A designs. And it's been fascinating to listen to the different sounds of Class A amplifiers because Class A amplification is, I suppose, what a lot of audiophiles would class as the gold standard. But is that really still the case in 2022? The Pearl Acoustic Sibelius, they are a speaker that have a history, they have a reason, they have a meaning for existing, which I think is all very interesting and I want to cover a little bit in their review. And obviously in their review there is a lot to talk about as well and what I didn't want to be in the situation was where I needed to also explain and talk about amplifiers and amplifier choice as well because that video could easily become an hour long. So I felt it made sense to focus one specific video, this one, on the amplifiers that I've been using for their review because it's really very interesting the different sounds and the effect of the amplifier or the effect the amplifier has on the sound of the speakers. And some of the amplifiers I've been listening to, I think some of you will find really interesting. But I need to be really clear here that this is not a review for the amplifiers mentioned in this video because I haven't done enough extensive testing across a wide number of speakers. So this video is going to be just how these amplifiers are sounding to me through the lens of the Sibelius speakers. And let's start with a classic hi-fi brand from the US that needs no introduction, and that is Pass Labs. And I have here the Int 25, which is the smallest of Pass Labs Class A topology integrated amplifiers. And it delivers 25 watts per channel into eight ohms. And it's a very traditional looking hi-fi amplifier with a rugged construction and massive heat sinks on the side that definitely gives it that high-end amplifier look. The overall build quality is very nice and the amplifier is quite heavy and I really like the aluminium remote control. So all of the premium high-end amplifier expectation boxes are ticked. But there is one, I think, pretty important thing missing here and that is the traditional Pass Labs meter from the front of the amplifier that I always thought was a traditional VU meter by all accounts. It's not, it's a current consumption meter which is really quite a different thing or shows you quite a different thing but I still think it always looks really cool. It's a, a standout feature of most Pass Labs amplifiers so I do feel it is a shame to not see it here with the Int 25 especially considering the price which here in the UK is £7,200. So a serious chunk of <laughs> hi-fi amplifier change. Pass Labs say on the website that the Int 25 can be a more simplistic design because of its low power output. And they have also scaled back the inputs to three single-ended, so no balanced. Again, because it's a simpler single-ended design. And taking a look under the hood is very interesting. How does the Pass Labs Int 25 sound with the Sibelius? Well, after a good warm up, it has a wonderfully inviting sweet sound that is extremely musical. And by that I mean music flows with an effortless, graceful nature. And the sound is smooth, almost too smooth, and likely too smooth for some audiophiles. But I think all audiophiles will find the Int 25 captivating in the mid-band because it's so lush and clean regardless of the content. 
And if you want to know what a euphonic amplifier sounds like, then seek out the Int25 for a listen, because it has this wonderful, unique way of taking you deep into the music that some audiophiles will definitely find addictive. Because music just grabs your emotions by creating a wonderful soundscape in front of you. And this amplifier is nothing but a genuine pleasure to listen to. Vocals have a great tonality combined with a very open sound stage, and that is always a winning combination. And this pairing of amplifier and speakers does vocals great. But for me, the Past Labs Int25 with the Sibelius speakers does maybe lack some, maybe some bite, maybe some authority in some types of music. And I'm thinking maybe more dance music or maybe electronic music. And I feel like. For that type of music, a pairing that had more, yeah, more bite to it, maybe more attack, and definitely maybe more punch in the bass would be, yeah, maybe better, again, for that style of music. But don't get me wrong, the bass is there, and it's nice and warm and lush bass, but some more attack, some more drama, and maybe just some more tautness to the bass would be better. And cranking the volume definitely helped, but it didn't seem to be the complete answer. And I was always cranking the volume with this pairing. And to test the Sibelius more, I also have here another very interesting amplifier, but this time a design from the UK, the Sugden Masterclass ANV50. And what's great here is Sugden is another famous hi-fi manufacturer with a pedigree in Class A amplifier design. In fact, Sugden say they built the first solid state pure class A integrated amplifier back in 1967, which is a pretty big claim to hi-fi fame. And Sugden say the ANV50 is at its heart a pure class A amplifier, but one designed with modern living in mind, such as running much cooler and only using 20 watts of power at idle. And the AMV50 can deliver a healthy amount of power, 50 watts into 8 ohms and 100 watts into 4 ohms. So that's double the power of the past labs, but the Sugden costs around half at about £4,500. And it offers a lot more connections than the past labs too. But overall, the build quality maybe doesn't feel quite as premium because the amplifier is light. Its chassis is large, but quite hollow. And the metal work just doesn't feel as thick but all the buttons and knobs all feel very good quality, so I'm likely just splitting hairs here. The Sugden remote control is plastic and definitely doesn't feel as premium as the Past Labs remote. And as we look under the hood, the ANV50 couldn't be any more different in design, again, compared to the Past Labs in 25. So with both amplifiers being class A at their heart or at their core, does that mean that they sound the same or even sound similar? <laughs> Not at all, these amplifiers couldn't sound any more different. And driving the Sibelius with the Sugden, straight away you hear the speakers take advantage of the extra power available. And that means they deliver a more energetic sound at lower volumes with a more present bass. And the sound character of the amplifier is also the opposite to the past labs. It's more forward into the room with a greater degree of emphasis on the high frequencies. And I don't necessarily mean it's brighter, I just mean higher frequencies are presented more clear with maybe more energy. And the Sugden sound is very precise with a nice open sound stage. And depending on the music, it's more lively character works better, such as with electronic music. But there is something missing for me with the Sugden amplifier and the Sibelius speakers. And that is in the vocal and mid-range region because I found it to be quite noticeably leaner in the vocals compared to the past labs, which meant I struggled to really fully engage with some music that features big vocalists. And I also noticed there was maybe just a little bit of excess, maybe a little bit of excess energy going on in the lower vocal region too, which made me think maybe it's an amplifier power thing. Maybe the power is maybe too much for the speakers. Seemed unlikely, but it made me question that. And obviously it was something that I needed to test further. 
but I also wanted to see if I could find an amplifier that would offer me maybe the best of both of these two different amplifiers or maybe as close to that theoretical ideal as possible. And I think that throws up a very real world scenario, a real world problem, potential problem situation, because I'm sure you can have larger, or I know you can have larger, more powerful Class A amplifiers that would offer you the best of both of these two solutions. But those solutions are going to be considerably more expensive. And I'm thinking of maybe Griffin's Essence range of amplifiers and products, and maybe the Canon Audio AI 1.10, the dual amplifier setup that I reviewed maybe a year or so ago. And both of those solutions are going to cost you about double to multiple times as much, which is fine. And I'm absolutely fine with the situation of, of suggesting the possibility of using amplifiers that are significantly more expensive than the speakers, because obviously the amplifier is really important. But <laughs> it does throw up the real world situation. You know, we are talking about a lot of money here. And obviously, Pass Labs offer two other larger Class A based integrated amplifiers, the INT60 and the INT250. And I think respectively they cost 9,000 and about 11 and a half thousand pounds. But even as you step up to the INT250, the most powerful Class A integrated, I'm not sure it's necessarily fully Class A. So again, you know, the theoretical ideal of big Class A amplifiers often comes with big price tags. So I wanted to test one more option, the Lima Acoustics Tucana 2 Anniversary, which at around five and a half thousand pounds actually seemed to offer me close to what I was looking for here. And power wise, the Lima is by far the largest, delivering 150 watts per channel into eight ohms and 290 watts into four ohms. And you hear that power straight away in the bass delivery from the Sibelius. And I'd say they are similar in bass output compared to the Sugden amplifier, but the bass is tighter and more percussive. Interestingly, the Lima is not an amplifier that I would call dark sounding at all, but compared to the Sugden, it did sound darker, or maybe just toned down in the higher frequencies. And there was a little loss of soundstage air, or maybe just that higher frequency ambience presence that we can get in some music. But I found that to be an acceptable trade-off for a more solid and tonally saturated vocal. And it's worth it for me because that made vocals sound more natural, or have a more natural timbre, and I think that always makes them more pleasing to listen to. And there was also more energy and more drive and more grip to the music with the Lima compared to the Pass Labs. But I'm not sure the Lima sounded anywhere near as sweet as the Pass Labs and not nearly as euphonic. It's definitely more straightforward and more honest about its musical delivery. So the Pass Labs, I think, has a more obvious pleasing character, which I do really like, and we do have to trade that off for the control, grip, and authority of the Lima, which I also really like. So to try and summarize all this, I really liked the Pass Labs in 25 with the Sibelius speakers. It's really difficult not to like an amplifier playing through obviously transparent speakers like this. It's really difficult not to like an amplifier that has that really euphonic, really warm, lush character. Uh, that <laughs> really just makes music fun, really pleasing to listen to. And I liked it more than the Sugden in a lot of specific areas, such as vocal tonality, vocal delivery, just the overall pleasing factor, the richness and warmth to the music. But I definitely still preferred the Sugden in some areas with some specific music for its more lively character, especially in the higher frequencies, and its more authoritative type bass. But what's interesting here is I think the best overall amplifier, especially for the money, with the Sibelius speakers, for the music I listen to, at the volumes I listen at, in this system, in my acoustically treated listening room, is the Lima Acoustics 2 Kana 2 Anniversary. Which is really interesting because it's a Class AB amplifier and not Class A. And that is a really interesting outcome because it just demonstrates to me yet again that in audio, I think the implementation of technologies is always more important, or equally important at least, as the technologies that's being used alone. And I think it's an important outcome because audiophiles can often become very obsessed with certain things, and especially as obsessed with certain technologies. And it could be the case that an audiophile thinks, you know, I only want a Class A amplifier, but I think it's an important outcome because 
it suggests that that's not always necessarily the best approach, that sometimes it makes sense to not exclude products just because of the technologies that they are, but only exclude them once you've listened to them in your system, in the situation that you have, once you've listened to them and decided they're not for you, that's the time to exclude them and not for any other reason, especially just for the technologies or maybe what you might read on a forum somewhere. And it also makes me, this whole thing has made me realize that the amplifier choice for the Sibelius speakers, the amplifier that you choose with these speakers will be really important because it will massively influence the sound that you get from them, which is pretty you know, obvious and self-explanatory, but you know, the sound from these three amplifiers has been really very, very different. So I would say just take that on board with these speakers. And I also think that I can see Sibelius speaker owners and maybe other speakers as well, having or investing in several different amplifiers, maybe not necessarily all at once, but maybe at different times in their life because they might prefer one type of amplifier with a certain type of music or maybe a musical interest stage that they're going through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting and helpful. And of course, coming up soon will be the full review for the Pearl Acoustics Sibelius speakers. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel. And of course, you're not going to want to miss the review of these speakers because a single driver speaker, it's very easy to make a prejudgment on what that speaker might be like, but are you right or are you wrong? Of course, you're going to want to find out. So thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.